Hey everybody, it has been an amazing month for World of Warcraft. Ever since WoW Classic launched on August 26th, we've seen millions of players around the world jump in to explore Azeroth as it stood before the Cataclysm. Whether you're revisiting old memories or experiencing it for the very first time, it's been humbling for the team to share in the community's passion and enthusiasm around this classic experience. We've seen players hit max level. We have seen Anixia and Ragnaros fall. Several Sulphuruses have been, have been crafted around the world. We've even heard about a couple of epic BOEs ninja looted, shame on you. And many, many Devil Soars have fallen and donated their leather to fuel the server's economy of Devil Soar leather. But we've also heard from many of you that you're ready for something new to sink your teeth into. And so while we originally had this phase two plan that was going to be Dire Maul Dungeon, World Bosses, and the Honor System for PvP, I'm happy to announce that we're going to break Dire Maul out separately and get it out there as soon as possible. In fact, just a couple of weeks from now, the week of October 15th, the Dire Maul Dungeon will go live worldwide in Classic. So get ready to craft those Ogre Suits, practice those Tribute Runs, and get your hands on that sweet, sweet loot from Dire Maul. Of course, we still have the Honor System and World Bosses just around the corner after that, and I'll share more detailed information on exactly when to expect that as soon as we have it. But we can't wait to see everybody jump into Dire Maul. Now, it's also been an incredible couple of weeks in Battle for Azeroth. Just last week, we saw Patch 825 go live, and players around the world got to experience the thrilling end to the war campaign, as Sarfang's long journey brought him to stand side by side with Anduin in front of the gates of Orgrimmar, facing down Sylvanas and her forces to bring this battle that has consumed all of Azeroth to an end once and for all. But in the meantime, there are other threats that have been lurking in the shadows. Lest we forget our adventures in Najjatar and at the end of Eternal Palace when we faced down Queen Ashara herself, we did so against the backdrop of an ancient prison built to contain one of the mightiest of all evils that Azeroth has ever known, the old god Nizoth. And as Queen Ashara fell with her last gasp, the lock, the final seal that contained Nizoth was broken and he was fully unleashed. And so what does that mean for us? Well, I'm excited to announce that the next major content update coming to World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth is Visions of Nizoth that will answer that question and so much more. For the first time, we're going to see an old god unleashed in their full might, in their dark fury. We have seen Cthun's eye. We have seen yogg saron locked away in a prison. We have heard of Yisarj, who perished long, long ago. But now for the first time, we are contending with an old god that is fully free of all shackles to roam Azeroth to reach out with his tentacles and tendrils and plot and plan and undermine all that keeps us safe. That is the threat that we face in Visions of Nazoth. Nihilotha, the sleeping city, the dreaming city, as, as some have called it, is the domain of the Black Empire. It is this alternate world inhabited by the old gods and their minions. And it's not a distant location for us to travel to via a starship or a portal. It's in fact all around us, on the other side of this thin veil, and what Nazoth is doing is tearing that veil down, bringing horrible nightmares and dark visions of a future in which the forces of the old god are ascendant into our world. And if we don't stop him, there will be nothing left of Azeroth to defend. Because this has been a battle for Azeroth between the Alliance and Horde, but it's also always been a battle for the safety of Azeroth, for the future of Azeroth that our heroes have been waging all along. And this now is coming to its conclusion. Now, Titan facilities across Azeroth are the key to containing, controlling, and understanding the power of Nazoth. The Titans have always been our world's last bulwark against the assault of the old gods. And so, of course, those facilities are being assaulted by the minions of Nazoth, whether humanoid allies, horrible insects, or the eldritch creatures of the old gods themselves. We're gonna have to rally to their defense and actually venture through these rifts into the world that Nazoth's minions inhabit, into an alternate reality that reflects the manifestation of all of Nazoth's goals, to analyze it, understand the power of the old gods, and destroy these visions from within. 
Let me talk about what that actually means in practice in terms of gameplay. Now, the first sign of Nazoth's power that we're going to witness firsthand are assaults by his minions on two key locations in Azeroth that are home to Titan facilities. Now, these Titan facilities are our world's last defense, our final bulwark against Nazoth coming completely into our world and plunging it into madness. And so when an assault is active, the zone will be overcome with powerful lieutenants of Nazoth, enemies to defeat, treasures to uncover, puzzles to solve, and much more. Building out this content has drawn upon everything that we've learned in making assaults and tides of vengeance, as well as major zones like Mechagon and Nashtatar most recently. Now let's take a look at a couple of these locations. First off, Uldum, home to the Halls of Origination, a great titan vault, is going to come under regular assault by the minions of Nazoth. When an assault is active in the zone, players will rally to Uldum and battle across the zone against the Old God's minions. Now, another key location in Azeroth that's home to a major titan facility is the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, back in Pandaria. Mogushan Vaults is what I'm referring to, of course. Now, last time we saw the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, it had been blighted with Dark Shah energy unleashed by Garrosh towards the end of Mists of Pandaria. Now, the passage of time and the natural redemption that came at the end of that arc has finally healed those old wounds to the land. And the veil stands fully restored to its original glory for all players to visit in this next content update. At least until it comes under attack by the minions of the old god and is once again plunged into a new type of darkness. Don't worry, it's only going to look like this while Nazoth is actively assaulting it. Otherwise, and in the long run, the original pristine veil is here to stay. But you will want to journey here, fight off the old god's minions, unravel the mysteries behind them, and do everything you can to thwart this great threat that's facing Azeroth. Now, Visions of Nazoth isn't just the name of this content update, it's also the name of its major new feature. By completing assaults, you'll be able to earn your way into the deepest recesses of Nazoth's mind and the reality that's seeking to manifest itself across Azeroth. There are these horrific visions, which are one to five player content centered around the capital cities of Orgrimmar and Stormwind that show us an alternate reality of what might come to pass if we do not succeed. Here we see maps of Orgrimmar and Stormwind indicating the deepening corruption the farther into the cities we go. Now, when you first enter a horrific vision, I can virtually guarantee you're not going to make it very far. Your mind will succumb to Nazoth's relentless assault as your sanity slips away. You'll begin to experience effects, various detrimental effects, some cosmetic, some very serious mechanical hindrances, as your sanity literally is drained by being within this horrific vision and by facing off against Nazoth's minions. You will have to retreat, but you'll do it taking with you the things that you've learned along the way, which will enable you to build better defenses for your future trips. Now, we're going to be working with none other than Rathion, son of Deathwing, who knows a thing or two about corruption because his father, of course, was famously plunged into madness by Nazoth's corruption. And what else does Rathion know very well? Well, of course, legendary cloaks. And Rathion is going to work with us to create a legendary cloak that will initially provide some sort of defense, some sort of shield against Nazoth's sanity-draining attacks. This will enable us to venture deeper and deeper into these visions on our successive visits, earning greater rewards also unlocking more of the mysteries behind Nazoth's power. This cloak may actually also come in handy when you face off against Nazoth himself further down the road. Now, in addition to the legendary cloaks, you'll also be taking fragments of Nazoth's corruption out of these horrific visions with you. You can bring them to Mother and Magni to analyze and research, which will allow you and allow them to strengthen your defenses against Nazoth's corruption and give you new tools to battle him and his minions. These will help your future visits into the Horrific Visions, allowing you to delve deeper, overcome greater threats, and weather the effects of his sanity-draining attacks. Ever since the Mage Tower in Legion, we've been looking for an, a way to provide a more satisfying solo progression experience and a real challenge that you can work towards on your own without needing a group of dungeon players or raiders or a battleground group at your side. 
And that's one of our goals, really, in crafting this Visions of Nazoth feature and these horrific visions. This is an experience that you can go into entirely solo and work your way through, making progress further and further each time as you gain the benefit of Titan research, understand the tricks and the threats posed by Nazoth's enemies, and eventually fully clear the vision at the end of your journey. Now, of course, you can also bring friends in with you. We've made this experience something that will scale seamlessly from one to five players, regardless of your role, and the rewards are equal regardless of the size of your group. We want to let you experience this the way that best suits your play style. We can't wait to let players check this out on the PTR and hear from you what you think. And all of this is leading to a showdown with Nazoth himself. And that journey is going to take us into the sprawling raid that is the centerpiece of this content update, Nihilotha, a 12-boss raid that showcases the full splendor of the Black Empire. We're going to have to fight our way through the military might of Nazoth's minions, disgusting spawning pools that have created the corruptions that we've seen across the years, the insectoid allies and minions of Nazoth, those humans that have decided to embrace his cause of corruption, and much more. At the end of this journey awaits the old god himself. We're going to need all of our allies, all of our might, all that we have learned through our research, our work with Magni, and channeling the power of Azeroth herself in order to emerge triumphant and save Azeroth. We also have a number of changes coming to our reward systems with Visions of Nazoth. In addition to the legendary cloak that I mentioned earlier that you can earn an upgrade to defend yourself against Nazoth's assaults, We'll also have new levels for the Heart of Azeroth that come with it both passive benefits and an all-new essence slot. Now that slot can be filled by a number of new essences that you'll be able to earn through content such as the assaults on Uldum and Vale of Eternal Blossoms, delving into horrific visions, our new Mythic Plus season, PvP, the Nihilotha Raid, and more. And also, as we're seeing assaults by the minions of Nazoth on Titan Forges around the world, we have to wonder, is it possible that these assaults on Titan Forges might somehow change the nature of Titan Forging? This is something we are still discussing, and we are working on a plan that we'll be able to roll out in the very near future, but we're excited about the idea of embracing the old god threat this time around to replace Titan Forging with something a bit different, something a bit more twisted and corrupt, that also ideally works to preserve the value of item level and the correlation between doing difficult content and getting the best rewards. Also coming in Visions of Nazoth, at long last, are a couple of new allied races joining the Horde and the Alliance. First off, on the Horde side, in a shock to everyone I'm sure, we have the Volpera of Voldoon, who will be joining the Horde. And if you've completed the Voldoon level up questline, and you're exalted with the Voldunai, you'll be able to jump in Visions of Nazoth, complete a quest line, and run around as a Volpera of your very own. Alpaca not included. Sorry. On the Alliance side, in the meantime, the Mechanomes of Mechagon are joining their Gnomish brethren on the Alliance. Grateful for the aid that's been rendered in overthrowing the despotic rule of King Mechagon, the Mechanomes will complete a quest line. For those of you who are exalted with Mechagon, and can join the Alliance, and you too can have a gnome of your very own with a robot arm and or leg, your choice. I'm also happy to share that we're adding new heritage armor quest lines for the recently updated Goblin and Worgen, coming in Visions of Nizoth. On the Goblin side, you'll be able to earn this perfectly suitable set, complete with explosives and rockets and everything else that makes a Goblin's cold heart happy. And of course, for Worgen, what worgen would be complete without a top hat that you can at long last use to express your true snooty inner self? Or just walk around as a wolf in a top hat. Who doesn't want to do that, really? Also coming with Visions of Nazoth is a complete overhaul of our auction house. This isn't just a UI reskin, but we actually redesigned and rebuilt the guts of the system to make it faster, more performant, and to get rid of those annoying single stacks that literally no one likes. We recognize that there are hundreds of thousands of transactions happening across our auction houses on a regular basis, and we want to create a modern system that's smooth and easy to use. In redesigning the auction house, we had a couple of major goals. First off, we wanted to make the whole thing smoother and more performant. This is something that we started working on right around the launch of Battle for Azeroth, when 
folks may remember, the auction houses were clogged with tons and tons of single stacks and searches and even purchasing or selling things might take several seconds or upwards of a minute in some unfortunate cases. We want to make sure that never happens again. Separately, we want to tailor the auction house functionality to the way that most people use it most frequently. And so if you're just somebody who goes to the auction house periodically to buy consumables for your raid or to sell some extra stacks of cloth or ore, you want to make that as smooth and as seamless a process as possible. The first major change that we've made is separating out stackable items to effectively create a separate commodities market where you can just go list a stack of ore or cloth or potions and people who are purchasing them can purchase portions of a stack. There's no more sense of there's one of this and two of this. There just happen to be 117 pieces of ore at this price listed by seven or eight different buyers. If you want to buy them, you can just buy 15 pieces. It'll buy part of someone's stack, send them the gold. If you've listed a stack and only part of it's sold, you'll get the gold for what's sold and the remainder back in the mail to you. Also, we have the ability to favorite items and create a shopping list for yourself. So if you regularly forget the name of that specific cut of gem or that consumable, you can just have a checklist that you can quickly search for and buy on the go. And on the selling side, you won't have to worry about stack sizes as you're listing your goods and undercutting is much less of a factor in the market as it plays out in practice. Ultimately, we've just tried to offer improved functionality, a smoother interface, and faster responsiveness for people on all sides of the market, as well as some of the power users out there. We can't wait for people to check it out on the PTR. Let us know what you think, and we'll be listening to see any further improvements we can make. So that's just some of what Visions of Nazoth has to offer. Also coming in this content update is a heroic version of the Darkshore Warfront, a new PvP season, Season 4 of Battle for Azeroth, with of course all new rewards, and a new mythic keystone affix that reflects Nazoth's corrupting influence as his tendrils spread their way across Azeroth. With this corrupted affix active, when you go into a dungeon in Season 4, you'll see occasional Black Empire obelisks dotting the landscape. Interacting with one of these obelisks will pull you into an alternate world where we see Nazoth's power ascendant and a powerful lieutenant of his stands guard. Defeating that lieutenant will return you to your regular reality, but will do so in whatever location you're currently standing when that mini-boss is defeated. This will enable some interesting skips that don't involve the use of Shroud of Concealment or Invisibility. Now, of course, if you keep these minions alive and you just decide to ignore them entirely, they may come and pay you a visit as you're fighting the final boss of the dungeon. So you'll want to strategize very carefully as you approach dungeons with the corrupted affix in play during BFA Season 4. Now, you may be wondering when you're going to get to check all of this out. Well, I'm very happy to announce that we're working literally as I speak on getting this uploaded to our public test realm for the entire world, and we should have it live later today. You'll be able to jump in, check out Assaults by Nazoth's Minions, venture into your very first horrific visions, and much more. And just after that, stay tuned for news regarding multiplayer raid testing and more. Thank you all so much. We'll be listening very closely to all of your feedback from the PTR. And just around the corner after that, See you at BlizzCon.